Welcome to Lesson 14D, Terminal Settling Speed of Spheres. In this lesson, we analyze the general case of a sphere falling in air at terminal settling speed. We'll find that the equation for the settling speed is implicit, requiring iteration. And I'll show you a recommended iteration procedure. And I'll do an example problem to show this procedure. First, let's set up the physics and equations for a sphere falling at terminal settling speed in quiescent air. Quiescent simply means that the air is still or not moving. Consider a spherical particle of diameter dp and density rho p, where subscript p stands for particle. This sphere is in air, where z is up and gravity vector g is down. If this particle is released at time zero, it will accelerate, but eventually reach a steady settling speed vt. Then the steady settling speed is called the terminal settling speed vt. The sphere is surrounded by air with density rho and viscosity mu. And since there's no acceleration, sigma fz equals zero. Let's look at all the forces on this sphere. There's a gravitational force, which equals the weight of the body. There's an aerodynamic drag force. And there's a buoyancy force, which is due to the displaced air as discussed in a previous lesson. Now let's sum all the forces and set them equal to zero. The upward forces are fd arrow plus fb, and the only downward force is the gravity force. The aerodynamic drag is 1 half rho vt squared cd over c times pi dp squared over 4, where we defined Cunningham correction factor in a previous lesson. For small dp, c is significant and must be included. For large dp, c goes to 1 and does not need to be included but I advise you to always include it to avoid potential error, especially since we'll use software to do the calculations. Once you have it programmed in, you don't need to worry about it anymore. This is the projected frontal area of the sphere. The buoyancy force is the density of the air times g times pi dp cubed over 6, which is the volume of the sphere. This term is the displaced weight of the air, which acts as a buoyant force upward. Finally, the gravity term has the same form as the buoyancy term, but with rho p instead of rho. In my notation, properties with a subscript p are for the particle, and properties with no subscript are for the surrounding fluid, which in this case is air. But these equations are valid for any fluid. Well, we see that pi cancels out in each term, and dp squared cancels with two of these dps, and we can combine these two terms together. After a little bit of algebra, we can solve for vt, Vt is the square root of 4 thirds times rho p minus rho over rho g dp and c over cd. This is our general equation for Vt of the sphere, the terminal settling speed. The problem is that this is an implicit equation. Why? Well, Vt is a function of cd, as we see here, but cd is a function of Reynolds number, and Reynolds number is itself a function of Vt. So embedded within this CD is some empirical correlation for CD as a function of Reynolds number, which contains VT. You can't solve this equation directly for VT unless you plug in some very simple expression for CD. So in general, this is an implicit equation. So to solve, we must iterate. Before I show the procedure for iterating, here's a summary of all the equations for a sphere falling in air. The ideal gas law, where this is R for air in various units. The Sutherland law for air viscosity, which is shown here with these constants. Always use this equation for mu for air. Again, I advise you to put this into software. And once you type in this equation, you can copy and paste it anywhere else without having to type it in again, once you're sure that it's working. Here's the equation for VT that we just gave above. CCF is the Cunningham correction factor, given the symbol C, which we discussed in a previous lesson. C is given by this expression, where Knudsen number is lambda over dp, and for air, lambda is given by this expression. Finally, we have Reynolds number, and if you prefer, you can use nu, which is mu over rho, and this expression for drag coefficient as a function of Reynolds number. This is the Morrison equation which I also introduced in a previous lesson. It applies to a smooth sphere for any Reynolds number less than 10 to the sixth. There are several schemes you can come up with to try to do this iteration. 
I've tried a few, and here's the one that I find works for nearly every problem. So here's my suggested iteration procedure. You guess some value of VT in meters per second. Calculate the Reynolds number, no units. Calculate CD, again no units. And calculate a new VT, again in meters per second. Here's the equation for Reynolds number that we use here. The equation for CD that we use here. And this is the equation that we use to calculate the new VT. I'll show some actual numbers in a minute. But I want to show how this works. You guess some VT, you calculate a Reynolds number, you calculate a CD, and you calculate a new VT, and the trick is to use this new VT as your second guess. With this new VT, you calculate a new Reynolds number, a new CD, and another VT. Use that VT as your next guess, and you continue the process, always using your most recent value, and eventually, it will converge, often in only a few iterations. I'll do an example to illustrate. We have a spherical particle falling in quiescent air. Here's the pressure and temperature of the air, the particle diameter in microns, and the particle density. We want to calculate terminal settling speed VT. To solve, we'll use the step-by-step -step iteration scheme that I just discussed. I used Excel for my calculations. You're welcome to use any software you wish. I got in the habit of changing only highlighted cells in Excel. The cells that are not highlighted have equations embedded into them. So I can set this up with any temperature, pressure, diameter, and density of the particle. Everything else is calculated. I calculate my Knudsen number and my Cunningham correction factor. And then here's my iteration as I described above. My initial guess was 2 meters per second. I got a Reynolds number, a drag coefficient from the Morrison equation and a revised VT. Again, the key is to use this VT as your next guess. In Excel, this cell refers to this cell. Then I repeat Reynolds number, CD, new VT, new guess, Reynolds number, CD, new VT, etc. And you can see that we have convergence to the fourth digit in less than 10 iterations. I did several extra iterations until I get my final converged answer to about seven digits. In this example, I iterate vertically with a new guess in each new row. I just want to point out that an alternate way is to iterate horizontally, where I set up my diameter, Knudsen number, Cunningham correction factor, and here's my first guess for VT. To the right are my calculations of Reynolds number and CD, and I keep repeating that Reynolds number CD VT, Reynolds number CD VT in columns to the right which aren't visible on this page. These are the final converged values. What's nice about this horizontal method is that once you have this whole row set up, you can fill everything down and then put in different diameters. That way, for example, you can plot VT easily as a function of DP. Now I'll do a live Excel demo. Here's the Excel spreadsheet I used to generate all these values. I use the universal gas constant and the molecular weight of air to generate the specific gas constant, which I use to calculate the density. Here's G and the constants for the Sutherland law. These are just values at SATP for comparison. I calculate mu from Sutherland, and nu is simply mu over rho. I calculate lambda from the equation I showed. This yellow cell is dp, which I input as 150 microns. I convert to meters, and here's the particle density. I calculate Knudsen number here, just the ratio of these two values, being careful with units. Then I calculate Cunningham correction factor. And here I set up my iteration procedure. My first guess, my Reynolds number, the Morrison drag coefficient, which is a huge equation for Excel. But again, once you set it up, and it always refers to a Reynolds number to the left, you should never have to set it up again. Then the new VT from that square root equation that I showed you. And then my second guess is this previous calculation. Once you have this set up, you grab this little box to fill in these cells, which I had already done beforehand, so nothing has changed. And we get our converged values. Now I'll show you the horizontal calculations. Our example DP was 150 microns. I convert to meters, calculated Knudsen number, and Cunningham correction factor. 
these converged values refer to cells way on the right, but my actual iteration starts here. In this case, my first guess was the converged value from the previous diameter, since that should be fairly close as we increment dp. The first time, however, I entered some number. As we go across, I calculate Reynolds number cd and vt, then I copy and pasted these three cells into the next three columns, and I continued that process several times. I finally stop at column BK, and if we scroll back, we see that my final value for VT refers to that cell. This horizontal iteration method is best when you're doing a number of particle diameters. If you're doing only one, the vertical case is perhaps more intuitive. Finally, I want to just show you that this first guess is not very critical. I'll try some other values like 0.5. Keep an eye on this converged value, 0 0.67145. 5. Notice that it's not changing. 10, 0 0.1. In all cases, it converges to the same value, even if I have a really bad guess, like 100 meters per second. It may take a little longer, but it still converges. In numerical parlance, we say that this technique is very robust. I strongly urge you to duplicate these results in your software. Use my same particle diameters and make sure that you get my same results, at least to five digits or so. Then you can trust that you're doing your software correctly. And once you have this set up in your software, you should be able to change temperature, pressure, particle diameter, and particle density, and the software will automatically update to the correct values of VT. Finally, I comment that this procedure and the equations I gave you are only for air and only for spheres. If you have non-spherical particles, there are some equivalent spherical diameter equations that can be used, much like hydraulic diameter is used in place of diameter for non-round pipes. And if the fluid is not air, you'd have to use a different equation for viscosity and for the mean free path lambda. Thus, you would get different Knudsen and Cunningham correction factor values. But Reynolds number, Morrison's CD equation, and our equation for VT would remain the same regardless of which fluid you're using. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.